does to me, guys. You just have to flip in, except which better heatwave or Vincent? Probably Vincent right now. Yeah, probably That's Vincent right now. You can make an argument for heatwave, but I mean, Vincent's three more points on a defender, right? You could definitely make an argument for both. Alrighty then, game number one. We've got the Ramon double lock. We're up against Enslave 5. We have a single pikeman. Ku looks very bad. Uh, Very bad. Very, very bad. Got a couple of slave infantries, but no targets. I've got a pikeman, but nothing to do with it. Let's maybe kick a lock. Maybe we don't kick a lock. Maybe we just kick a slave infantry. An illusionist is a terrible, terrible, terrible card. Round one. Which is why it's just a bad card as a, as a four provision. So if you think about your four provision cards, you often want to play them round one. So then you can keep your golds. Like playing, f if, imagine you play just four provision cards in round one and then lose the round. You've you spent zero provisions, right? Whereas if you're spending like five provision cards and you lose the round, in theory, if this was just a four provision card, you'd have one provision, you know, left in your deck for the later rounds. So mulliganing a four provision card in round one and being forced to mulligan that is, is absolutely terrible. Like, it's really, really bad, but that is just a problem that this card has. Um, obviously, we've got Vincent for tempo. It's just not a very good card, though. Like, what the heck is this hand, mate? I guess we just go Pikeman. <laughs> it's very sad. Uh, we could go Ramon Pikeman, right? Because then it gets some armor and we can try and lead it to keep it alive. Let's do that. Use the armor value off the leader, right? Give it a leader charge. All right. Obviously, we could have gone Vincent too, but it doesn't seem great. But this formation leader ability is a lot better than it used to be. Now, unfortunately, we don't quite get access to coup on this Vigo. Um, but what we can do is play another one and get that sweet, sweet armor. And this can actually hit the Vigo in the back now, right? Which does set up our coup on either the Pikeman or the Vigo. We've also got now Brathens on this. It's also going to set up Illusionists, right? So it's all uh, kicking off a little bit over here. Play it like this, just so we get the Brathens Assimilate value off our coup. Alright guys, it's all popping off, mate. What an early start. Look at this armor exactly in the mirror. How could we lose? Our opponent's trying to be the Pikeman gamer, but it's not happening, son. Unfortunately, they could uh, be a Terranova gamer, but I don't think they are. I think they just got this... Um... Obviously, could have played around that a little. But they would have killed a Pikeman. I just baited them into not killing a Pikeman, right? All right, let's go Vigo, because we can find either a Pikeman. We could find also an Emissary Informant. It's like a mini Brathens, hopefully. All right, not what we're looking for. There's nothing in the graveyard for Illusionist. But it's, not, it's a nice little Stave Infantry target. This could be an Amnesty. So Swears was another thing we thought about playing. Oh, no. Could have played around that, I guess. Oh no, they're very good at finding that. So it could go Lydia assassination here, maybe? Nah, it's not even good, right? They only have one engine. The only thing I don't like about this is I lose armor. Oh, I guess we just do it on this one then, right? Oh, look at that snipe. Believed. Yeah, the turncoat's really popping off. We could have uh, certainly considered Vincenting it turn one, right? I wasn't expecting it to play for this many points, I must confess. Showing the value of the Remedy as well when you're playing Spies and whatnot here. Uh, Remedy would be a great card for this deck, for sure. Assassination not quite killing this. I mean, is it too late to Vincent it? 
It is a little bit too late, but... Just accept that we should have done it sooner, right? Should secure the round. It was quite an exciting opening, opening round. Bloody hell, more? Seriously, bro? Is this uh, my front row locked now? Can I not even play anything here anymore? Yep. So, Remedy can give us an informant, but my row is blocked. But I can informant a slave infantry, so that's pretty good. also opens up Vrygoth, right? Not as, as good as he should be. Maybe I could have just played one of these in the back to see this coming. Right? But I can still play him. Basically, it's just a slave infantry. We did have a remedy, but we kicked it. Okay, they played remedy into nothing. Very good. Well, well played. <laughs> so we might see a leader here. Hopefully in the front row. Frees up some space. But I imagine they play around it and just, yeah, do that. I mean, at this point, we'll just play a lock or whatever. Keeps us ahead. But it does look like my opponent's going to win this one. Guess we'll do the same again. Can I stop hitting shields and armors? Alright, cool. I'm not even sure we've got any soldiers left. We do. We have the flipping illusionist, right? We went uneven. We have illusionist for our Vrygoth, mate. Which can play pikemen or even slave infantries. So let's see. We've got, got our coup back. We've got the Yoakim, which works with the leader. The operator's great, but obviously in this hand it's doing nothing. So let's kick it. All right, we found the illusionist. Now we have to make a decision if we want to push or pass. I think we'll just pass, right? I'm a little bit scared of like Hefty Helga, though. I am quite scared of Hefty Helga, but I guess, yeah, I'm actually really scared of Hefty Helga, guys. Like, is it really a pass? I could Yoak him and then put Operator on top, bro. Right? I feel like it could be a 2 0 situation. My hand is pretty legit. Oh! What a Chad card to find. <laughs> okay. So we want to put... Do we want to put Operator on top? Or is that just wrong? No, we don't want Operator really. Um... kind of just want to play this, right? Oh, I, did I rope out? Did I click? I think I roped out, guys. Oh, no. That's a nightmare, mate. That's an actual nightmare. I don't know what's on top now. Shoot. I would have gone for the other illusionist, right? Although our row also has space, space issues. Because Vrygoth's wanting to go. So I guess I was supposed to Jermaine in the back. Should have gone Jermaine in the back, right? I don't know what we're pulling anymore, but I guess we just have to wait and find out. Which is a little alarming. Oh no, mate. Please stop filling my row. This is very sad. I mean, I do still have the pass, but we're going to take this, obviously. But yeah, that's not great news for me, is it? That my row's full. Can't even play this. It's all it's gone a little bit wrong this game. So Jermaine back row next time.
They free up some space. Unfortunately, the Vryga spawns an illusion, like a one strength thing off the illusionist, right? Which is just going to fill the row up again. So we'll pass. Oh! Row space has been found. Let's just go for it, right? Try and 2 0. It's a really, really sad Vryga. Like, unbelievably sad, but we're going to try. Never even clock, never even in doubt, guys. 100% win rate deck, guys. Confirmed. All right, right. I said you're a fan of my work. And the leader was also worth way more than six points because think about the amount of points the armor was worth in round number one, right? It was worth an incredible amount. So we've got the lock, which is huge. Again, Illusionist has the same problem. In round one, you have to mulligan it, even though it's bonded, it feels pretty terrible. Vremdi the Dremdi is not a round one card. You could argue Vrygoth isn't either. The operator looks bad here, but I don't think we want to kick it. Um, I mean, Vrygoth's more locks. Do we kick operator here? It does look bad for round one. I mean, I could operator and Albert Armored Cavalry, which would give me more. It's kind of. Not even a bad shout. It sounds a little ridiculous, but it's actually correct, right? I have this lock too, though. Do I really need to... I mean, I have no proactivity unless I just want to YOLO my Joachim, which I don't really want to do, but let's do it anyway. <laughs> oh, easy game. What an easy game, chat. <sighs> what an opener. We've got the collar... We've got the Ramon interlocks. We've got the Tourney Joust. These mages don't stand a chance, mate. Oh, God. That's not ideal. I could have taken like a self to any joust, but really in this matchup, is that what I want to do? The answer is no, right? Obviously, we would have just liked to have gone illusionist on a pikeman. There's, there's no doubt about that. But still, like, if we can win this round, like this, for this this cheaply, if you like. Seems pretty reasonable, right? Could probably pass here. If they don't themselves. I was around, yes. I don't remember it too well. But, um... I don't remember exactly how it worked, but yes, I was around when that happened, mate. I don't remember exactly what it did. Did it just... Yeah, I can't remember. I mean, I'm not really that scared of going long round, to be honest. With all these locks. The problem is, like, just my hand is very... Control heavy, but I also got all these... Are we ditching operator at this point, maybe? Seems awkward, right? This is a proactive card, but it's just kind of bad. Yeah, I mean, I don't really understand how I can push here. I have no slave infantries for my Jermaine. I have all these control tools. Do you know what, mate? Let's just play the Jermaine. It's probably supposed to go back row because of all these bloody row locked cards. Yeah. I'm just not huge on the prospect of going into a long round against Siege, even with all these control tools. I'd rather just bleed it out of them. It's 
somehow don't think that was the correct blow. Isn't really what I wanted to lock. I, I, maybe I could have gone Brathens for like an MS3 right to buff this up. I've got a leader for that though too. Because this is just a good coup target in a second row. Okay, there's the siege. So we could now consider passing. So I still have a bunch of good cards in my hand here, right? Okay, we're not actually getting any leader value here apart from in terms of like what we put on top because I've already used my Yoakim, right? Okay, we're getting this is super expensive for them. It wasn't cheap for us either to get to this point though, right? It's, to be very fair. That was a pretty good pretty good bead. I just wish I kept the tortoise maybe as a proactive card rather than and I still had Jermaine, right? But we still have a couple of locks, I think. Maybe at least Yeah, still got a couple. There's some pretty good things to pull off the illusionist now. Kind of like the hand. Vriger for more locks is pretty legit, right? So illusionist options. Trebuchet, Ballista. Marine. Battering Ram. Okay, so it's the first engine, I feel like we could go maybe Illusionist here. I guess also Mushy Truffle makes sense, let's go Mushy Truffle. Do we get the, f the, the instant click on this? I feel like we don't, right? Maybe just one buff is better here. It's of uh, jewelers, right? This does play around oil though, because I have to click the patience card. But yeah, just getting jeweled like this feels a little silly. But here we go, the illusionist coming through, guys. That's what we like to see. So we can Vrygoth these. I could have gone, um, Mushy Truffle as well, Hero. And then Vrygoth is going to spawn two of these at once, mate. It's pretty nuts, right? Like, Vrygoth on Bonded Illusionists is no joke. Are we getting oiled up? We're not, guys. We're surviving. Oh, this is great news. This is very, very good news. This is uh, looking pretty hot. Are we going for Vrygoth? Or are we going to try and answer some of theirs? Because also, like, a lock off Vrygoth could be good, right? Rather than spawning another Ballista. We could also go Coup here to set up our own Patience card. It answers one of theirs and sets one of ours up. Also, reach for like a boiling oil right off Lydia. We've got a couple engines set up. Let's start answering theirs, probably, as we're going to be probably more efficient at answering theirs than they are answering ours. Don't really see us getting a better invo. A little bit worried about Vincent. 
But I can always just set it up with a lock, right? If I was to just lock this seven, for example, then I could Vincent it. But yeah, they do seem to be struggling to kill our stuff compared to how we are doing against theirs. So, what is the game plan here? I get two engines at once with this, but again, I could use this as a lock. Also, Lydia here on an oil is just pretty good, right? Like, or on a bombardment. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually matter what we put on top because I have no Yurikim, right? This just also means my Vrygov can go for a lock. This looks well fun. Let's go. I'm thinking this still survives, right? My little ballista. All right, here we go. More ballistas. Here we go, mate. Oh. <laughs> we need the ballistas now, boy. And we can play Lydia for more, right? And we can even play Brathens for more. I don't think we're scared of Araxis. To be honest. I wouldn't mind another ballista though. Feels good, I'm not gonna lie. This feels pretty satisfying. <laughs> oh, this, yeah, I was gonna say, the Marine would definitely survive, mate. Do I ever summon this? Oh my god, oh, I could have got. <laughs> I don't think I had enough, but ma imagine I could have got it, mate. Yeah, I'll link this deck afterwards. Oh, GG, my friend. Tough break. Yeah, again, Illusionist, the big problem with them. I have to mulligan them round one, which for four provisions is pretty terrible. These two cards are the most obvious kicks. I'm going to kick this. Just great about Tortoise. I mean, this is why also I'd like to play Nausicaa, but Nausicaa's dying a lot at the moment, right? There's so many people playing Tony Jails and such. Who's next? Any of you's got the courage? Are we invoing or are we just gonna Vincent it? The problem is if I Vincent it, the defender haunts me later, right? Whereas if I invo it, I don't have to deal with it again. One thing I really don't like about defenders is if, if you purify them in round one. Which this isn't the same with Vincent, but if you purify them, that they still keep their defender tag when they res. I'm going to make a bit of a video, I think, about like defenders and my thoughts. I wanted to start doing more talky videos towards the end of patches when I'm running out of decks. Gods protect us. It's a pretty good play. We're definitely uh, a little bit low on options here. Come 
kind of the only thing I can really do here. Here, here, here. Not even a great lock crap, right? but I don't mind Broth and sing this, I think. It's a little aggressive, but... I should have put this one here. This round one's been very awkward, hasn't it? This is awkward, guys. Very awkward. Slam jamming. That makes me feel a little better. I'm not feeling too bad anymore, really. Let's see the place very controversial, right? Mm. Just got so popular, you know. <laughs> Guys, who licked her mushrooms? Do we ever just play the lock? I think so. Play a lock to win the round. into popping off oh yeah trust me you know me i'm knee deep in gals every time i step out of the house i've got to put my wellies on because the floor is flooded with clunch man it's nicked no it's not it's licked someone licked her mushrooms mate trust me I don't really know what to do, mate. I think I would quite like to uh, get the Geddy out. They have no Crow Mother, right? Oh! This is a little bit slow, but it's carry over. This mulliganing of Koo is a nightmare. Um. Her Hermit's pretty legit, right? Off Illusionist. Uh, actually, no, it's not. 
It actually sucks. Oops. Okay, there's the crow mother. I just have to make sure I stay ahead of Gedi, right? Tram, my head. Look at the synergy, guys, in the deck that I've built. It's impressive. This is a very balanced card, guys, by the way. That my opponent's playing. I really respect them playing a hipster card. So hipster alert. It's a bit of a weak, weak player now. Do I have like a big in your face finisher play? I mean, I guess an illusionist isn't terrible. Could just put an illusionist on top, right? Unfortunately, I can't quite get any uh, armor value, right? Wait, oh, the hermit died, guys. Nightmare. Look at the value, though. The alchemy, guys. Maybe I could have gone for the alchemy the first time I got the bond. <laughs> Two O. Two O, baby. Let's go. Another two O for the. Best deck in the world, mate. Ooh. Unorthodox, but we got there. We smelt blood. For our SK players, we're in fish flappers. Again, if you're new here, please do consider following. Appreciate it. Because we've had two follows in the last 30 minutes. Uh, but there's 434 people here. So are you guys telling me that 432 of you are returning? Because I'm not convinced. Like, I believe that there must be at least a third new person here. And I just can't wait to welcome you. Yes, I'm begging for follows. What is your point, chat? And listen. If you unfollow and follow, honestly, I'll count it. Actually, don't do that. Don't do that. Because you'll forget. it won't work. You'll forget. Uh, uh, Alright, we can actually go Operator on Pikeman Yes, mate! All pain, no gains What's up? My hand is way too gold heavy, mate I'm not gonna lie Forve into Cool Into Dunker Into TA Into Vincent Woo! Oh. That's just disappointing. So this means there's pikemen in our opponent's graveyard for our illusionists now, right? All pay, no gains. Welcome, fans. We're reasonably happy to pass after one more card here. Don't do it, Pikeman. Don't betray me. Thank you. Ugh, stop gurgling like that. It's a pretty chunky sorceress. I think we just pass for it. Job done, mate. We've got the pikemen in the graveyard. This operator's just a nice little carryover play. Carry over. They're going to try and bleed us and we're just going to have endless pikemen. Endless illusionists. Maybe ditching the Vrygif was a misplay because it's kind of a nutty card. His hand is looking hot though. I, I'm tempted to kick the Germain, but it is my round three win con and the fact they've got it is just a good thing. The hand is just good, right? 
Apart from the pikemen when I want illusionists, I would say. I can't kick pikemen in my pikemen round. But I would like more illusionists. But I don't have illusionists, so I guess I'm keeping the hand. Could just go Joachim. The problem with a, a straight up Joachim is hitting save infantries and stuff. Obviously, I can uh, Vincent this. I'd kind of rather wait though, right? Maybe just take it. I could just take it right and then play Mushy Truffle for carryover. Okay, they still want to go for it. The leader's coming in clutch, mate. It's actually huge, right? We're going to be so bonded that they just can't touch us. Here they go. So bonded pikemen, if you weren't sure, can hit anywhere. Now you know. So again, with the Mushy Truffle, we could go Illusionist. That'd be kind of rude not to, right? Quite like to kill that thing. There is a rebuke off Lydia I could go for. I could also just take a leader charge and go for another illusionist, right? This is why Mulligan in the Vrygoth seems particularly weird. Oh! Almost killed it, imagine. We're just trying to save our golds here, right? Rippers. Making a bomb would have cleaned up the other one anyway. It's more important for me to save my carryover. That's a bit of a stinker, isn't it? So definitely hand management is one thing that's seeming quite difficult. And there's no surprise that that's the case when the deck is unpolarized. Like, look how many four provision cards I've got left in the deck. I want to play this one, so there's basically three fours that I don't want to play. I've just got so many provisions stuck that are just being wasted. But that's because we've got the pikemen, we've got the locks. Alright, these things. Just need to make sure we get ahead here. I don't want to play Jermaine. I don't really want to play Lydia either and not remove something good. Still ticking for two points per turn. I guess I'm just going for the uh, sorceress, right? I could obviously use this, but such so shit. We could also invo this. I mean, we haven't we haven't had the cow combo work in fairness of this deck yet, because again, it is just sort of tied to the save. But it's so good, right? But I know what you mean. We've just got too too many things going on at once, just because we're not polarizing the deck, and that's just unfortunately a problem with five provision 
why I often try and avoid them. All right, lock is bad in this matchup. To be honest, this cool. Oh, this card's a stinker if we don't find the card we need. All right, we found the card we need, chat. We're fine. Oof! What a rush. Now, Lydia's kind of sick, honestly. She's just a banger of a card. Everyone's playing removal at the moment, so she's basically just like a, a removal with a body, right? But then you can... You don't also have to go for the removal. You can do other things with her. Yeah, all we needed with this one slave infantry, because now we've got Vrygoth, that's all right. They don't answer. A beautiful pair of legs. I don't think that's what they even say, but... But, like, look at this as a... It's just, a, it's just nuts, right? I didn't draw the Vremdi, the Dremdi, either, but it's just so many points, mate. Back row in case of Gezra's. Fair. Very fair. I feel like quite a lot of my ones are going to die here. Can't quite kill this, can I? I could just play a bountiful harvest, though. This is six. This is this one. Hey, Devon, what's up? GG, baby. Let's go. It was kind of close. But our hand was, oh, was very close. If we didn't draw the save infantry when we did, we were screwed. The deck needs more polarizing. Like, but it's kind of inevitable when you're playing this kind of deck that it's going to be the case. So there we go. 100% win rate, guys. How she make a clap is a mystery. All right. Hello. Hello, hello. Is it dwarfs? Is it Aglace? Let's find out. We could try some Aglace talk. <laughs> Forge. Could be fun. We could try some Aglace, guys. Would you guys be down for that? Okay, we have double slave infantry with Redeem the Dream. Going first. Tortoise is my proactive card. I don't really like the look of the emissary. This should be good. The hand is clearly awkward. Mulliganing cards like that just feels very wrong, but that's just the way the de this deck is. Like, it's not a competitive deck because it's not polarized well. Like, mulliganing cards, like sixes, and like, I'm. This card's weird because you want to mulligan it and it's a four. I'm mulliganing six provision cards and mulliganing five provision cards, right? It is a weird deck, but it could be worse. It's doing a job. Mm, I guess we just go Ramon lock because I probably want more locks. Just apply some pressure. It's not even like this is particularly good, right? I could have gone Brathons instead, I guess. Like, this is where you just want four provision cards. Things like Nausicaas, right? Featuring any? Oh, yes, please, Daddy. Mate, I'm not gonna lie, chat. I may have accidentally been watching some like any interviews last night. <laughs> I feel like it's a decent invo, mate. Just get rid of it. It's just gone for the game, right? Whatever.
Just tweet. Mate, I'm not going to beg, friend. We'll find the right moment. I'm not actually a beg. <laughs> I'm also, uh... As much as I like to, you know... I have a bit of a, a confident persona, I, you know. I'm not exactly optimistic of my of my chances. You get me. So it is what it is, man. Wow, what a card! What a card! Just all my armor. Uh Yeah, I mean I was playing Decree, I actually cut it. I had Meno Decree as the original idea. The truth is, this deck would just be better if you weren't playing Pikeman, probably. You just have less fives and, and don't play operator. You just play more fours and, and keep the Jermaine stuff for it. Oh, we can look at that now. We've done the unlimited operator thing. That's one psycho like video already. Right? We can actually make it better now. Oh, I was thinking I was going to give armor. Never mind. Tweet, tweet and ask if she remembers that guy called Specy. Of course she remembers, guys. Come on. Maybe maybe I should, like, uh, I don't know. Maybe I should tweet at Love Saves Today and be like, yo, guys, have you got the uh, any performance so we can relive it and I can share my... I feel like that's a better thing to do, right? But like, yo, Love Saves Today. It was... Uh, how many months? Not even long. It was like a month ago. It was... It was in September, I think. Early September. I'd probably just tweet at Love Says Today and be like, Yo, Love Says Today, reckon you could sort me out? Whatever, man. They need a lot of points here. A lot of points. Okay, <laughs> okay. Right, after this game, we'll ditch, I think, the unlimited Pikeman stuff. We'll try and make it a more competitive deck, right? This is still the Pikeman video, though. And we'll just do another video that's like a, a more competitive version, which basically just means polarizing the deck more. It basically means removing Operator and a lot of the fives. We might still play Illusionists. I think they're kind of cool. But I don't think we actually need the Pikeman, right? I mean, like, I think Mushy Truffle's still a great card, too. Of course it is. It's one of the best cards in the game. So we do want to bleed here. A single illusionist is pretty bad though. However, we're able to pull... Oh, it's actually popping off, mate. It's OP. This is bad in this hand. I would love another illusionist. We can get one off your camera. Oh, mate. These illusionists are popping off on the berserkers. Like, who needs... Who needs pikemen, mate, when you can... <laughs> It's basically the same, right? It's not quite... Obviously, this is not quite as good. It's the same vibe. I mean, even Pyrotech's pretty good, right? This is even better, mate. So we're going to Yoakim. We could obviously just put something on top with Yoakim. Just another Illusionist, probably. Let's do it. Wait, no, guys, I messed up. I had to play it to the left. Okay, look, listen. Now you've learnt my lesson. You have to play the second. Oh no, I messed up my pocket. 
I was ready for the memes. I was going to get two more flipping berserkers in here, man. But I messed up. Please forgive me. Who knows? Maybe I'll get another illusionist. Oh. That's not bad, but... It's not quite as fun, is it? To be honest. Unfortunately, as well, even though I could go for an Albert Armored Cavalry here, uh, then my Vrygif would be blocked, right? I don't have enough room. I actually don't have anything for my Lydia yet, either. I mean, I guess we're just passing pretty soon, here. Because my engines are running out of juice anyway, right? The armor on them. Although, having said that, this mine is a ton of points. Seems like a nice time to pass. It's gonna take him two cards. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, what is happening, mate? It took them Gezerus and Uridan. Oh, it doesn't have resilience. Did I play it in round one? I think it's just bugging out. I'm pretty sure I played it this round. Okay. The good news is, it literally was zero points because of Uridan. But my bad. That was just me being dumb. Okay, we missed the flipping slave infantry. Like, this is the thing, right? We just need more consistency on, like, the actual cards which pop off. Which is, like, Vremdi the Dremdi. So we need Menno. I want, I'm talking Roll the Kareem, right? More four provisions, like Nausicaa's. It would also be a nice thing to get more high-end golds in, like that are above 10 provisions, but Nilfgaard has previously in the past always had that problem where the only one it had is ball. It does not have Terra Nova, but again, if we're playing Terra Nova, it's not the easiest thing to do. It's easier said than done, right? Unfortunately, this Vrygif is just a stinker. We get better lock targets. Also, I might need the lock to set up my Vincent. Legally Sweet. English is hard mate I suck at reading Thank you very much for the sub mate I appreciate it Nikolai's what's up Welcome 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 Yeah the Syndicate deck's been performing pretty well for me Is there any bronze specials I want? There is not a single one I didn't think there was Oh hello sunshine Oh hello Bad that. It is already played for eleven and put a threat on the board. Now Yarpen's not a bad lock, but I think what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna lock him after my Vincent. So I'm gonna lock him after they uh use leader on him. And then I'm going to lock him and then Vince in him. Because the lock would just be to deny the extra points, but who cares about that? We'd rather than just get the extra points. 
Gives more points for my Vincent, right? They're buffing their seven point card as opposed to a three point card. Okay. Okay, it seems they played around it. Fair enough, I guess. Alright, 100% win record, 4-0. Let's make it slightly more competitive now though. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to see the other version of this deck, which we maybe take out the Pikeman stuff, let me know because I'm, uh, I'm going to try it now. Yeah, look out for that.